Good evening to another edition of Flames Unfiltered, hosted by myself, Bob Root, and Kyle Lewis. Season 5. Um, actually, yeah, that shorter intro. I'm like, oh, man, I'm not to prepare. You're ready, are you? Yeah, <laughs> no, new, no. The new graphics this year, different intro, different outro, um, a little bit more, it's, it's going to be just a little bit more, I don't know what the word is, just a little bit more free-flowing. How does that sound? I was going to say unhinged, but that sounds concerning. So I'll go for it. Unhinged <laughs> sounds like we might get in trouble, right? Well, well. <laughs> hey, I'm going to tell you something, Kyle. If we have another season like last year, yeah, it could get unhinged. You know what? Okay, that's the starting point right there. Not going to happen. It could get Not. unhinged. Well, it could. Yeah, it could still get unhinged in any case, but there's no way it goes as bad as last year, largely because of the super positive attitude surrounding the team that everybody keeps talking about. I know, and I agree with the super positive attitude, and I'm all about that. There's but laughter in the saddle of them again. Do you think they're going to come in all bitchy, whiny right away? Oh, no. But I mean, even just the vibe around camp is so much different than, than well, last year, right? So it's, Camp did get underway today with physicals. Tomorrow, I got the uh, Flames PR site up. Uh, they hit the ice tomorrow, 9 a.m. 9 a.m. With which what the groups of McGinley, uh, McDonald, team, and Vernon. Team Vernon's at nine, Team McGinley's at eleven, Team McDonald's at one thirty. Yeah, cool. You know what? Speaking so, of times, I want to touch on one thing. Yeah. For people new to the podcast, we traditionally record on Wednesday nights or Wednesday afternoons. And we're gonna plan on releasing every Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Now, that would change if the flames play, but that's kind of kind of the gist of it so if you're just catching this pod for the first time look for us every thursday morning apple spy all, all the major podcast players and youtube if you want to watch um us i don't know if you want to see us it might be a little <laughs> just put a name to a face yeah maybe maybe you know maybe uh, once maybe uh, you know what please do though so you can see all the graphics we did a lot it's a lot of work to do you this, did so. you did all the work i just agreed oh, well, to it you know i uh, yeah yeah well wow well. Okay, but I do it because I love it, though. So it's not well, like and it shows. Like I sat up at one in the morning and pained myself to do this. I was <laughs> like, pumped to do this, you know. So yeah. I, I don't know. It, it is what it is. But you know, Kyle and I enjoy doing this show. I've done it for five years, Kyle. This is Kyle's second year doing the show. And, Crazy, uh, absolutely wild. From a random, cool. you know, what, what a you know, what you people were, say. slid into my were, DMs and asked me to to guest on your show and. You were one of my fan episodes I would do. And you know what, Kyle? I want to bring that back this year. I want to do a, a couple fan episodes where we just have other fans come on. And uh, that's how I met you. Well, we met on, yeah, on Twitter and just kind of one thing led to another. And uh, here we are today. So, yeah, um, exactly. And right, just to so, kind of touch on your prior, your prior point about our scheduling, the Flames schedule year over year is generally remarkably consistent. So I think anybody and anyone will find that a Wednesday night show is nine times out of ten the best time to do one because you're not missing a game. I, I have the schedule in front of me, and of course, right off the get go, the first game it's a Wednesday night go. It's a Wednesday. Night. But how many out of eighty two do you get it there? But what we're gonna do on that one is, and I, I haven't even ran this by Kyle, but hopefully Thursday morning. Kyle and I are going to be able to jump on, do a show, and then release. We'll we'll see if that works yeah, out. Sure we can make after it that, I think we have two, three, three Wednesday games. Not bad. Not, Not bad, bad at all. Um, so it, it, speaking of training camp, this is a fun little note I wanted to bring up because I don't think many people will know this. But Jonathan Aspero has been invited to a camp on a PTO. Saw it. And yeah, so former Belleville Senator, former Moncton Wildcat, former captain. Saw that, and that's yeah, why I was going to ask captain. Yeah, I don't it know who this guy is, so you're going to have to fill us in. Uh, he was a really good puck-moving defenseman. He actually, when he was captain, one of his assistants was Jacob Pelche, and Jacob Pelche then succeeded him as captain. So they actually played together for two full seasons and change, I believe. So there's definitely some familiarity there. But uh, mobile defenseman, good puck mover, good skater. Um, you know, kind of a Nova Rager. I mean, he's a pro hockey player. He's an NHL level. Hasn't been to this point in his career, but... Um, not the kind of PTO that makes you say, "Oh God, not this again!" Like it's a sensible PTO. Can I let's can I touch on PTOs just a, a, a tiny bit? I understand, you know. Conroy said, you know, hey, we're not gonna we're gonna we're gonna give the youth a, a chance this year, and 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 I'm I'm 
you know me, I'm old school, but I'm all for this, right? I'm all for this. I've been working on you for two years on this. So <laughs> you beat me down to this point <laughs> right now where I have just, just submissive. Now I'm just like, yeah, okay. Bring in the youth here. But these youth better freaking produce this year. But that being said, I, I, would you have been upset had the flames brought in two, two guys with like a hundred ish, 130 game in as a PTO and just made it clear and said, Hey, listen, we're going to give the youth every opportunity to make this team. That being said, if they struggle miserably, these are our fallback guys. Wouldn't have bothered me at all. The problem Wouldn't in the past was they regardless the fallback of what was, guys. Though. No. And we regardless did. of what was said, or what the perception was, everybody, you know, in flames land knew that the older guys were going to get the jobs or a couple of the older guys were going to take some jobs and, you know, you'd have, um, you know, if you have like, like, uh, Cody Eakin a year ago, two years ago. Yeah. Like, you know, Milano last year too. Yeah. Well, and you know, it's kind of surprising that Milano didn't make it, but he really didn't have a good camp at all. You know? It was awful. Yeah. So no, it wouldn't bother me. I just, you know, I, I like just, pushing these younger guys and I like having veteran players in camp. It was just like, a given before the young guy wasn't going to get a job. I, it, and I agree completely. I mean, it was just a foregone conclusion last year that yeah. this was a roster at camp and this year's a little bit different and I'm all for having the, you know, Peltier and Coronado and you know, whatever, make the team. Right. But what if Coronado struggles in camp? We don't have anybody to fall back on now. Now that being said, we, there's still plenty of time for Conroy to bring me in PTOs. If I remember right, um, Versteeg was a late PTO. Well, he, he was, was at Camp of the Oilers. Yeah. In Edmonton. yeah. Um, so th- we can do this still. But yeah, sure. But nothing, just, nothing set in stone until the season starts, right? No, if you look at the depth chart, though, and like let's say Coronado is struggling, or, or God forbid Peltier goes down with an injury or somebody, what now? Yeah, and well, and I think in this case, that's what it would take to keep Pelche out because he now has a real jersey number, number twenty-two. Previously, Trevor Lewis, um, previously worn. Yeah, we have a couple right? different. Serengovich is wearing seventeen. Um, Osterley's yeah. wearing eighty-two. Eighty-two. That's a weird one. That's a very actually. Uh, Jonathan Aspro is wearing eighty-three in camp. That tells you how weird those numbers are. Have uh, you ever seen an eighty-two? Martin Straka. Right, just right into my head. I love Martin Strzok, and to this day, I can't tell you why. But anyway, um, there's been a couple Sorry. others, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you actually, maybe think of something else. That's kind of interesting. So the guys you expect to do well, and Coronado and Pelche, both two of them, Doer for sure. Um, there was a lot of talk about Adam Klapka. Um, I know because <laughs> now you guys, come on. Like I'm well, not. Against- I'm not against Klapka. I, I, I want him to succeed. But we get yeah. people on Twitter pencil him in the top six because he dangles one day. Like, well, it's against the quality of competition, too. But I will say uh, there's always surprises in camp. And apparently, according to him, all he did all summer was play hockey and work out. He's in tremendous condition. He could be a surprise in camp. Does that mean he you know, right. makes the top six? Of course not. No. But, you know, maybe he you know works himself into the situation for the first call up this year, right? The thing is, you know, and I look at this, I look at our, like our fourth line and now, and I probably shouldn't even go with that part because it, it uh, doer is going to be penciled in there. They didn't sign him to a one-way deal. We saw what we, we got from doer last year. I mean, remember, who does, remember how angry we were when he was getting stretched, scratched on the stretch. Oh, we were pissed. Was, well, yeah. rightfully so. Right. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of guys who just got a couple for him. So who does clap can move out? Are we playing Klapka over Coronado? I don't think so. Oh, no, but I mean, the thinking is that Coronado, Coronado's probably with the big club and Klapka's got a prominent role with the Wranglers, you know? Or do, you know you know who he could move out? Uh, although Rosiska probably will be penciled in at fourth line center team. Maybe we'll see. Uh, he, he could be a guy that could get moved out. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's an interesting trade piece. He's put up some, he put up some points and he played last year. Leaves a little bit to be desired, especially with the size that he has. But um, there's a lot of good young players, most of whom have some NHL experience, you know, vying for spots here. So, and I still wouldn't rule out the possibility of a trade, you know, during camp. What did What did you think of the young stars? I didn't. Went, well, the stars went seven, one, 
Calgary, Vancouver. I, I don't take these scores for. No. Oh, they don't mean um, anything. Ed, we beat Edmonton 4 3 and we beat Winnipeg 4 2. I watched the Vancouver game. I I seriously worried about our franchise future after watching that game because <laughs> good God. Yeah, it was terrible. I mean, I, I enjoyed it really, Jimmy. It's just a sign that hockey's back. Um, it's always weird seeing people you've never heard of wearing your you know favorite team's jersey. Um, yeah. And some of them we're familiar with, others not so much. But, uh, you know, it's enjoyable. The real, actual, like the preseason game starting here uh, and beginning Sunday. next week. Sunday, Sunday night. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's going to be really fun. But, um, you know, it's like the Adam Klapka thing. Like Klapka really he jumped out. He, yeah, he stood out again against, you know, some younger, we'll call it lesser competition, but his peers, right? But, you know, there was streaks last year in main camp that I thought he was. I, I yeah, he's he's worked his way into the conversation of, of being, a, you know, a fairly interesting prospect with this team. Um, yeah. And if he doesn't get a chance here, he can move on and become a, an NHL player somewhere else, just depending on how things shake out. But um that's that's what you want to see from those tournaments you want a couple guys to turn some heads um you know hanzik was was as good as people thought he would be which is great but it's always fun to see like a surprise say man that guy was good or you know that play as much as a lot's being made of it for one play it was very goodrow-esque it was it was very very skilled i loved it i and i love his size i do i i i man i just i'm not like brian burkish and everybody's <laughs> needs to be that but i am <laughs> I do believe to be a successful team in the National Hockey League in the playoffs, especially, you need to have some grit and grind and some size. Oh, yeah, you do. You just you can't take that, you know, and sacrifice speed, for example, which a lot of teams would do. You know, those we plotting, did. yeah, the plotting heavy teams like the Anaheim Ducks of 2007, like that is super passe. But I mean, the size definitely helps. You just you can't give up those other intangibles for it. Yeah. You got to be a quick team, whether you move the puck quick, skate quick, ideally both. But I mean, if if your heavy game is great, but if you can't do it quickly, then you're in trouble. I thought Siona Siona st- stood out a little bit too. Yeah, absolutely, he did. I, I thought he did. Uh, how, what was your thoughts on Coronado? Now I know he. What did he have? A couple points in the in the final game. What was it? He's in a weird spot though, um, because I was I was fucking strange. Goal at four points over the time, but yeah. Did he, but did he stand out, though, to you? Because he didn't to me. He didn't, no. he, didn't, he didn't come off the page like, I mean, obviously, no, I'm not stupid. I'm not going to compare him to Connor Bedard in his Chicago debut or anything like that. But I don't know. I kind of expected maybe a little more, uh, I don't know, domination is the word, really. but. Well, maybe. that's a fair expectation in a sense, but also if, if I'm in his shoes trying to think like maybe he was or how he felt, you're kind of waiting for main camp center. Connor Bedard is already penciled in as the number one center in Chicago. He could rip it up into the Young Stars tournament or do nothing. I mean, it's not going to change anything. It's when camp starts to really matter. So Coronado, I think, was just kind of playing alongside his competition, played a decent steady game, did the things we know he can do, but he didn't really have anything to prove. He we already know he's a you know, the top prospect on this team. Um, yeah. But when with camp, you know, being open, I think, again, this is where he really has to hustle and prove that he, he does. League. He does. Like, I, I believe, I believe that there is a spot penciled in for him. And I hate to say it, but I, I as I don't, yeah. I usually like the opposite way. I feel like it's his to lose versus his to win. Kind of like the his to win method better, but we got to, yeah. we got to try something different. And I, I do believe that he's fully capable of being a top six winger next year on this team. Um, simply because number one, there's a spot open and number two, he's not going to be productive on the fourth line. We know that he could probably play third line and be fine, but um, I just feel like it's his to lose. And I, and I, I really do hope he comes into camp and I do hope he has a strong um, convincing camp that leaves us all say, Hey, this guy deserves to be on this team. I think he, I basically have penciled in a second line right wing, and I could see him playing a little bit on the top line. I think he's going to have a tremendous camp. I mean, I, I it's a toss up between him and Sharon Govich for me. Um, because you're going to see what he brings to camp. Oh, yeah. Well, he's got a wonderful shot. I mean, he's, he's going to be a 50 point player for sure. Unless he gets hurt, there's no doubt in my mind. Like, you know, that 
he's a better skater than Toffoli was. I wouldn't say it's good of a finisher by any stretch, but I don't. Who else has an opportunity in front of him like Sharon Govich does on that team? This guy's been handed the the yeah. keys to the first line, and like, <laughs> yeah, what's well, what he does here? Well, and I mean, if you're playing with a with a comfortable, refreshed, happy Jonathan Huberto, you know. So do you think Huberto and Lindholm are on the first line? Is that, uh, are you thinking they're going to go back to that? Because that's what we all thought last year at this time. Yeah, provided they, they keep they keep Huberto on his wing, I think I think it can work. Depending who that other player is, too, right? Who, who that winger is. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know what your better option is. I don't think it's Kadri. Kadri's just not elite enough in score what, to be in that spot. Wouldn't a, wouldn't a dream come true though? Be you know Lindholm, Kadri, Backlund, Ruziska as our centers. And then, yeah. you know, wouldn't it be a dream come true to have Coronado on the right wing and Huberto on the left on the first line and have that work? Yeah. Like, wouldn't that be a dream come true for us? And I, think, and I think it's very possible that it does, right? I think, anyway. The other one that's kind of an X factor here, uh, Andrew Mangiapane. I didn't know until fairly recently that he had a nagging shoulder injury. He talked about it very candidly. Well, uh, I know, but I always take those with a grain of salt. I'm not saying that it's not a valid excuse, but yeah, thus it's an excuse. Yeah, he wasn't horrible last year. He just hadn't, you know. He, he didn't he jump off the page like he did the the year before, though. Because there was games the year before where I was like, this guy is clicking. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and he was. I mean, he had 50, 55 points. was the 30 goals, I think. Uh, he's yeah. he's going to rebound, too. Not to the massive extent I expect Huberto to. Maja Huberto couldn't have been much worse last year. Um, but Maja Bonnie, I think, could possibly be considered right wing option on the top line. Yeah, he's got the finish. We've seen it from before. So back to rookie talk. I got a question on this. What rookie when, you know, you need to think about who's possible to make in this team. I, I would pencil in, you know, Pelche, Coronado, Walker Dewar for sure, I think is going to have a spot. And, and, you know, we just don't know what's going to happen with Wolf. And I guess you could throw in Klapka and, and whoever else to the to the mix. But which yeah. of these rookies do you think will have the biggest impact for the Flames this season? That's a tough one. I'm going to say Coronado with Pelche being a close second. And I say impact because I think Walker Dewar is going to be phenomenal, but he's not going to. It's a role, though. He's playing a role. Yeah, he's not going to score the way I expect the other two will. I mean, they've the other two have scored at every level. I mean, Dewar, I think his ceiling is a 2020 player, which would be a very pleasant surprise. But I think you're going to see him pot, you know, 10 goals, 25 points kind of thing, but be very effective in the penalty kill um, and, you know, forecheck in the opposition, like that kind of stuff. But. Coronado and Pelche with an edge to Coronado. I, I want to say Wolf because if he gives the opportunity, I think he's going to be fantastic. But do I we don't... want that though? Is Flames hunting? I, I want Wolf to be great. Don't get me wrong, but do we want that right now? Don't. Wouldn't we be better off and better served having Markstrom have a huge bounce back year? Oh, we would, and he's going to bounce back. But you know how much is the question? Actually, and he was. Uh, we talked about this. I think he was featured. Uh, Markstrom was yeah. in the hockey news recently in terms of why he's expected to be a comeback player. If he, if Markstrom and Huberto, you know, if they both rebound, I mean, it kind of makes you think of, of to a lesser extent, you know, again, like Kippersoff. Yeah. Those two key players, you know, if, if they can, if Huberto improves by 25, 30 points and Markstrom goes back to, you know, five shutouts, nine, 15, save percentage, like we're in the playoffs. I don't see how we aren't. We have a really interesting situation this year. Last year we had um, a ton of players. I, I don't know. I, I should know the number off the top of my head, but I don't. Um, that they, they, they came into the season coming off, uh, you know, career career, career yeah. years. Well, that's really hard to replicate, right? So that, that thus we we had a step back, right? Well, look at how many guys are really like, kind of like mentally penciled in, and you know, you you don't just hear it from us or or other Flames hockey talk, but you hear it nationally. Um, on on radio shows, podcasts, television, that you know, Huberto could bounce back, Cadre could bounce back, Majapani's has the potential to bounce back, Markstrom has the potential to bounce back. Like we get three of those four to do this, or even two of those four to do this. Where does this team go? Like this, I don't believe it's as doom and gloom as many people have talked all summer. Well, and again, you know, Oliver Shillington. He comes yeah. back and was just if he's the same player he was in 21, 22, like man, that transition game that speed like that's a game changer right there it really is i just yeah 
I look at this team and I, and yes, I know. And, and I know people that are listening to this right now are probably going to say, yeah, but what about Backlund? What about Hannapin? What about Zadorov? What about Lindholm? I agree. But where do we stand with those guys? Where do we stand with Michael Backlund? Well, okay. Here's the thing about Backlund and the whole group you just mentioned. How, how can you expect anything different from any of them than the response well, Zadorov has been saying he wants to stay, but but the, the response you've been hearing is, I want to see how the season goes. Well, after the train wreck that was last year, can you really fault any of them for not committing I'm longer sorry. term to this team? No. I'm so even what they've said in the interviews and you know, prior to camp, they've all said the same thing. Like, yeah, it's definite possibility. Like, I love it here. Like the tone has changed. I don't think it's just lip service. Does it mean they all get contract extensions? No, would it be a good thing if they did? Not necessarily. But the dialogue is now a real dialogue where it's before it's like, get me the fuck out of town. <laughs> you know, you look at this. So like I look at Backlund, for example, you know, he was like, get me out last year for sure. And now he's back and supposedly speaking positively and acting, which I expect out of him. He's a professional and he's yeah, always, sure. been. but if we lost, let's say we lost him, right. For nothing. Ugh. Are we Okay. But yeah, I know I, I see the look on your face. There's a few of these guys that I wouldn't be crushed if we lost for nothing. If we lost Hannafin for nothing, I'd be pissed. If we lost Lindholm for nothing, I'd be pissed. If we lost yeah. Zadora for nothing, I'd be pissed. If we lost Backland for nothing, I would be like, okay, we got what we paid for with Backland. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, I mean, we've also been accustomed to giving away players for nothing. Kiprasov left for nothing. Aguila is one of the – because the team turned around so quickly, that trade – blunder i mean that was everything about that was that's why but, yeah i'll, uh, but I'll go to my grave defending to living on the goudreau thing like i will like i think it's absolutely bs that fans in calgary still blame him for losing him for nothing like what could he have done like he did everything he could you can't make a guy well, sign yeah, at that at that time he did but i mean there's a lot of backstory prior to it getting to that point that you know probably look at differently um but the thing is, it's like in the NHL now, especially where there's always trades and bad contracts being retained and, you know, hitting the cap floor using players that are no longer in the league. Um, I don't think it's as bad a thing as it used to be to lose a player for nothing. Hey, all of a sudden you get his contract is up. Yeah. You gain, you gain yeah. cap space. Yeah. We get, we got to, like, it's a little bit different. We got a guy retiring next week who's been in the building supply industry for, you know, basic, well, damn near 50 years. And he's retiring and it's like, you know, it, it, it like we got what, what we needed out of him, right? Or like when you have an insurance policy, like I was overinsured not that long ago. What's yeah. that? You don't gain cap space on them, though, do you? No, but I mean, like, you know, it's like a buddy of mine told me, like, when I was, um, I had this insurance policy and yeah, I said, yeah, it was kind of a waste of money. Like, I wasn't really paying for it. He's like, well, you were insured that entire time had something happen. He's like, you got what you paid for out of it. And he's like, I know it doesn't seem like it, but yeah, it's kind of true, you know? If the player walks or nothing like Michael Backlund, it's not ideal, but hey, you didn't make a bad trade. You didn't bring back a yeah. shitty contract. You didn't pick up somebody who didn't pan out. Like, yeah, it's not no, the world I mean, and that's, I think we just need to kind of look at it with a little bit more openness. I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, Hannafin, that's an interesting one, though, because when they said he wants to play in a U.S. city, I could really see that, you know, and I can't even fault him for that. I mean, Hey, you know what? The thing with him, yeah, I agree with you on that too. Like, I can see why he'd want to, but now he's in a position where the first star defenseman that gets hurt, they're calling him a Noah Hanvin. So, God forbid, if Zach Wierenski goes down again, Columbus, don't you think Goudreau and, G and Gabranson might be saying, hey, you know, there's a guy in Calgary who, you know, fit in a pinch? Um, I, I think that goes for any team across the league. Like, yeah, Pittsburgh got Eric Carlson, you know, good for them. Again, some of that guy's get hurt and he's out long term. Hannafin looks pretty attractive. The thing with Hannafin that makes him different from everybody else is his age and his contract, yeah. right? He's played a ton of games and he's still what 25? 25, 26 at the most. Yep. You know, I look at our defensive parents right now and I'm like, holy cow, this top six is <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty damn good. So you got Uyghur, Anderson. You got Tanev and Shillington. Presumably they'll, they'll be back together because that works so well. And then you got uh, Zadorov and Hannafin. 
do you think we do you think Hannafin ends up staying in Calgary? I don't. No, I think he's gone to the trade deadline. I don't necessarily think he's gone sooner. Even if we're a like if, what if we're a second ranking team in the Pacific? What if it's us and the Oilers battling for first? Are we trading Hannafin? Mm. Eh, I, I mean, are we? Well, if it's, it's a hockey trade, which is seems unlikely, but I mean he's gonna give us a hockey trade though. Because the team that's going to be trading for him is a team in that's going to be fighting for a playoff cup. They're not going to give up another asset coming back. That'd be depends on how badly. Them. Well, it depends on how badly they need him, right? Yeah. I, there's always situations that come out of nowhere. They don't happen a lot, granted, but yeah, it'd be I know. To I mean, it, it, it could work out. You know, if they they have an abundance of a right winger that we need or whatever, that's probably a bad example. But well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe they're throwing a draft pick as a sweetener because you know the Flames feel they're deep enough on D that they can afford to go without him. I mean, the whole year is going to tell the story. Right now, it's easy to say, yeah, it's not very likely, but things change. That's the fun of watching the sport, right? Is Zadora anyway. coming back on a mission? <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel I like he what, what, the, what did I say to you when I texted you that day? I'm like, I love that big dumb fuck. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you do. Like, he's oh, you know what? He, he's the He's the best ambassador the team has right now. He loves being there. He's like, as much as he was infuriating at times last year by making really dumb defensive plays, like he threw massive hits. He had a hat trick in the, in the, the last game of the season. Like uh, um, his enthusiasm, was, it's almost childlike, right? Like this big lumbering Russian guy. It, it's, it's endearing. I mean, you want to see that guy succeed. So I, I think his enthusiasm is rubbing off on his teammates that, and you know, the other reasons why the, uh, the vibe has changed. I feel like this is a guy that could resign. Do we want him to resign? I think I do. Oh, yeah, if it's a cheap, if it's like a three year deal for two million per, sure. It'll be more than that, though, don't you think? Come on. Well, I do. Th- no, come on, though. I mean, I think, of course, I think it's going to be more than that. But if he wants to stay that bad and they say, hey, listen, we'd love to keep it, but here's all we can do. And he says, you know what? I love it here. I want to raise my kids here. What, if he, said, what if he said, I want to do three years at four? I'd do it. Nah, I wouldn't. You wouldn't do it, huh? Nah. The How old is he now? Up? Well, yeah, but even then, why? I don't, I don't know. I just don't see that as a, a wise. Well, way to he's durable. Time. He's durable. He's tough. He's physical. Uh, now we're getting back all the intangibles you love so much. He's got a, <laughs> he's got a decent shot. You know, clearly, yeah. No, there's a lot of reasons to keep him around, but I just, I don't know that it makes sense long term. So Zadorov is he's 28. Two yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be a terrible deal. It wouldn't be a terrible deal. I, I, I uh, that's as far as I'm going with that. You know, like that's one thing Brad and I resolved on this year of the show. We're going to argue more. So this is just the beginning. We are going to argue more. Yeah, the way it doesn't turn it into anything too wild, huh? <laughs> that's one thing. Me and you can argue, and then we just laugh about it. But yeah, that's that's why we're able to do this, right? Lindholm, what the hell's going to happen here? Yeah, <sighs> yeah. Do you know I listened to like. 20 podcasts this week about his interview coming back to camp and how he said the right things, but he didn't sound emotion emotionally invested. I'm like, what in the hell is he supposed to say? It's a weird situation. I don't know what the hell I'd say. Right. I mean, I what's mean, he supposed to say? How is he? Is he supposed to be super fired up? Yeah. I don't have a contract. I'm really pumped about it. I, I think he just probably, I mean, I, I don't, I can't hardly fault him for saying, you know, I kind of want to see what happens here. He's earned that, hasn't he? It's the most honest response he could give. I mean, I think he's going to get signed to a deal that's just too much money and too much term, quite honestly. But So I, I, I saw something on TV the other night, and I, and I couldn't wait to ask you about it this week. NHL Network posted the top 20 centers right now. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Are you willing to guess where he's at on the top 20? I think I, yeah, I remember seeing it. I think he was like 18 or something like that. Nope. He's number 20. Oh, he is 20. Okay. So that being said, if he gets over 9 million, like, is that what a, the going rate for a top 20 center in the league is? It, it is. The problem is all those guys, their values being inflated by the fact they even made that list. I mean, if there's, if there's 32 teams and every team has a true number one center, he wouldn't be on there because in a lot of teams, he's not a true elite number one center. He's number one center by default. He's probably the best number two in the league. If he, now that Bergeron is retired, especially if he's actually in that role, 
right? I agree. Like I'm not. I love Elias Lindholm. I don't want to lose him by any stretch. I love his shot. I don't want to lose him either. I I feel like he brings a lot to the table for this team. Yeah, but I mean, but, is he as good as the is he is he in the same class as the guy in my background, Joe Newendike? Absolutely not. Was no. he as naturally gifted a even a skilled playmaker as even like a Mark Savard? No. I mean, look, like, again, look at the season his line mates had in in twenty one twenty two. Both 100 plus points, and he was like 82. It's still a damn good season, but it's like when oh. Craig Conroy scored 78, skating alongside Drum McGinley. He doesn't get 78 anywhere else because he doesn't make it no. happen himself, right? So, so do the, do the Flames have a game breaker? Do we have possibly, a game? Breaker? Well, yeah, Ooh. possibly, and possibly in Huberto. All that, yeah. yeah, possibly. Do we right now, based on what we know? Absolutely not. We don't, but we have a pretty deep team. And what would you rather have, a game breaker or a pretty deep team if you had to pick one of the other? I'd rather have a deep team. There you go. We've had That's a lot of years in Calgary track. with we've had a lot of years in Calgary with a game breaker that didn't really get us anywhere either. Just that one year. So yeah. Really, which is a shame because we wasted a lot of good years, you know, not getting him enough support. So do you read into it his interview? I mean, do you are you losing sleep right now? I mean, are are you I am, but not about that. (laughs) (laughs) Do we need to talk, Kyle? No, I'm good. I'm good, actually. Things are good. You know, just busy life, whatever. But yeah, me too. Uh, You know, I I feel like, though, like, I don't know. Like, there, you know, we get a lot of uncertainty in the offseason, and everybody was like, Jesus, the Flames got to do something. They got to do something. What are we doing here? We're sitting here. We're not doing anything. We're not doing anything. And now I'm sitting here thinking, God, maybe it's the best thing not to do anything right now. And let's see what we got. This, this roster, as it's currently constructed, you know, the biggest change being uh, veterans out, youth in, they kind of deserve a mulligan. What was, you know, what Craig Conroy throwing this thing in the blender again and again throughout the summer into training camp? I don't know what good it would have done. I mean, I think it was kind of a bold move, a bit, a bit of a risky one, but a bold one to stick with this team for the most part. They you know, moved to Foley it, and, you know, well, and they did some really cool things. I, I again, I can't. I can't overstate how important I think Mark Savard is going to be to Jonathan Huberto's revival on the power play, especially everywhere that guy goes, junior or pro ranks where he coaches. I really hope players. I really hope you're right on this. I, I I can't based on his track record. I don't see how I could be wrong about it. Right? Like I think that's going to make such a huge difference. Then having Ryan Huska there, who's a much more positive, energetic guy, none of this plotting Daryl Sutterness, which you know I love Sutter and he did for the team, but they needed a change in terms of their culture, and it seems like they've got it. So now that they've got it, now if they fall flat on their face and Conrad doesn't do anything, then I have a problem. Yeah. And a serious one at that, because, you know, then you're going to have all the answers you need to say, okay, this team is worth something or this team is worth nothing. And how do you start to slowly, you know, build what you have or tear it down in a way that's constructive towards a better future, which they've never been very good at doing anyway. So there you go. I don't even know where you'd start with this one, though, because there's lots of long-term deals and lots of money and... Well, I mean, that's where you get creative with the Arizonas and the Montreals, the world. I mean, you know. Yeah, but how long are they going to be the teams that do this? Like, I mean, I'm sure you'll say, well, there's always going to oh. be a team that sucks <laughs> and is willing to do this. But I, at some point, like these teams, Arizona's got to get their shit together, right? I mean, well, gotta- realistically, in a perfect, well, you'd think, yeah. But in a perfect world, the league eventually is going to make it so that these bottom feeding teams can't just absorb contracts to make other teams free of their horrible, horrible mistakes, mm-hmm. you know. But when that day comes or how that comes, I mean, that's going to be another lockout. That's going to be a whole other mess. So, oh, geez. Come on. I lived through enough of that. I don't need another lockout. Yeah. Nobody does. Oh. So, each week on the show this year, we're going to be doing a thing called the X Factor. And what the X Factor is that through the week, Kyle and I are going to peruse Flames Twitter or Flames X, I guess we'll call it now. And yeah. we're going to, one of us two is going to select a, a tweet we see. It's intriguing, something to talk about, and it's a way to get uh, our listeners involved. And and as it goes, when we decide on one, we're going to post it prior to the podcast, so you're going to be able to see if if it's yours. And uh, we're going to talk about it. And so we'll start today with uh, with a tweet I saw that I thought was interesting, and it was basic trade scenarios. And now most of the time, I'm going to be honest, I hate trade scenarios because usually they're stupid. But ever the optimist. But I saw this one and I thought, you know, 
this is something that 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 I see could happen. The top one, exact. It, I could see happening, and then would this be enough? And the first the first part it says to Anaheim Dan Vladar for a fifth round pick. What what? I I think Dan Vladar will get traded at some point. Obviously, yeah. what do you think the return is on that? I think in a perfect world where somebody needs a goaltender, you can get maybe a low second or a third in a perfect world. Realistically, a fourth and you know, a depth defenseman, maybe a fifth is just it's not enough. Like, you just may as well keep him for that. I think, I, I, I think you keep him for that. I think it's a third. And well, you know what? That really will be dictated on how he plays to start the year. And, and I think he's going to get an opportunity to. Do oh, it's going to be dictated on how he plays. Now, the other goal is the league perform. If anybody really shits the bed or if somebody gets hurt, that value goes up by at least a draft round, right? Or now, the other one, the second one here, so I'll read this one off because this is really interesting. So to Ottawa, Adam Rzutska, a second-round pick and a fifth-round pick, and Calgary gets Shane Pinto and then signs him to a two at 2.5 per deal. So what are your thoughts on that? I would absolutely do cartwheels if we got that. <laughs> I, I think Shane Pinto is going to be a hell of a player in this league. Yeah. I really believe that. I'm inclined to agree. I'm a little, very yeah. slightly because I do think Rzitska with the right coach could be a really good offensive player too. So when you throw him in, which is fine, but then you add a second round pick, which is pretty valuable currency. It's like, well, I can see why Ottawa would consider it because Ottawa has an absolute treasure trove of skilled forwards right now. I do think, I mean, I'll, I'll be clear on this. I do believe that Pinto will sign in Ottawa probably before this thing gets released tomorrow. But because I do think they're going to trade somebody to make room for him. They're going to have to because they don't have cap space. So they're well, this to. is the thing. All of a sudden, you know, all these guys that they've been drafting and developing are getting big money, long-term deals. And I think the most recent one was, was Jake Sanderson. Like eight million, eight years, eight million. I know he's good and he's going to get better, but man, Pinto's, that's a lot of money. He's, he's Pinto's teammate in North Dakota. They're, they're good hockey players. They're, they're both really good. Uh, and, and Sanderson, when I saw that money, I was like, Good God, eight million. Well, that's Jeff. That's Jeff Sanderson's kid, isn't it? It is. Yeah. yeah he was. A, he was a great player. That's a great NHL bloodlines. I mean, he was the. Uh, remember, he Jeff Sanderson was the one that got thrust into the role uh, of playing alongside Morrison and Naslin in the playoffs, and Bertuzzi got suspended, right? Yep. And he and he did. You know, he was admirable in that series. But uh, but yeah, back to the he point. Played a lot of years in the league too. I mean, he. Oh yeah, and he was effective everywhere he played. But yeah, Jake Sanderson's a great player, but I mean, the thing is with these teams like Ottawa, they're getting better and better, and all those e ELCs expire at the same time. Like you gotta you get a fleet of Brinks trucks to pay everybody, and it's like okay, somebody's gonna become a cost with this. And realistically, it's Shane Pinto because if Shane Pinto doesn't sign a bridge deal, you're gonna have to trade him. Really, you're gonna I have think. to trade him. You will. Yeah. And and as far as giving up on Adam or this guy a year ago at this time, I would have said, heck no, I'm all for this guy. Right? He wore on me last year. Uh, he did. He, oh, yeah. He, we talked about that down the stretch. And it wore on Daryl Sutter. And I think that was the thing because I think the guy kind of lost his confidence because he put up you know, 20 points. And he was really good games. for a two week span, three week yeah. span. He was really, really good, wasn't he? Yeah. But he's still, there's still some value there. And I just don't know what to do with him. But, I mean, you know, Camp's going to tell a lot about him. It really is. I, I know. I agree with you. I think Camp will tell a lot about him. But I just, I worry that. I worry on his consistency day to day. As you because should. That's knocking against him his entire career. We talked know. about that when he was in junior with Sarnia, right? I, it, you can't, does that go away? I don't think it does. It's tough to make it go away. Oh. Oh, it really, really is. What did you think? I'm going to go off the board here a little bit. What did you think? Did you hear what Steven Stamkos comments today? You know, I caught a bit of it. Um, so so all, all I caught was he was disappointed. That he didn't get no extent, well, that has many extension right. talks. And I really, how do you feel about a player just saying that in the media? Like, do you feel like that should be kept in house, like the negotiations? Like, why are you whining about it? Or is it like, you know what? This guy's been there a long time, won them Stanley Cups. He deserves it. Here's how I feel about it. Um, out of respect, they need to have been honest with him and come to him and said, hey, we're thinking about this number. What do you think of this number? Or, you know, if we can't do this, this won't work. And at least let him know where he's at. Communication is so critical. If they're failing to communicate with him, I'm okay with him saying it in the media. Must if be a Florida have, thing, right? Because that's what happened with Huberto, remember? Yep. If they have communicated with him and then he still says it, 
nah, not really a fan of that. No. But if they are just been blowing them off, then I figure it's freaking fair game at that point, isn't it? Yeah, and that's kind of one of the variables that, you know, I, I guess I didn't really consider a whole lot about it because it, it seems like a black one issue, but it's interesting when you think, you know, how is the team handling it? And like I like I just mentioned with Jonathan Uberto, he had no idea he was getting traded. Nope. He was basically under the impression they were going to be discussing extension. You know, he's making long-term plans in South Florida and then bang, you're gone. And this kind of, I guess to your point, I don't know that Sam Coast would have sent anything. He probably wouldn't have had this been better communicated. I think communication, you know, whether we're talking about a workplace or a relationship or your kids or, or whatever. I mean, if yeah. you don't communicate properly, the, things can go to shit. Yeah, you're living on borrowed time. I mean, it, it can go bad real fast. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Flames announced that uh, Megan Mickelson will be doing the color this year. Your thoughts on that? I think it's a good call. You know, uh, that, that's on radio, right? Yeah, radio. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, I've always enjoyed listening to her. I think she do a good job. I mean, we haven't talked a lot about uh, or too much uh, about you know the broadcast options and, and who is Calgary is, is using. But, yeah, I think she'll do a really good job. Does radio bother you nowadays? Like, like I love listening to the Fan 960 and stuff, but it seems like they just have purged themselves with so many people that it's, I don't know. It's well, that's like, what bothers me about it. I mean, I still enjoy it, but I mean, it used to be like exciting uh, and like, you know, you have these big personalities and they had all these different awesome. personalities. Yeah, like there was a lot to it. And now, I mean, it's been completely gutted, right? So yeah. hopefully she can breathe some life back into it because the last few years, like it, it was like every day on, you know, X and, and previously I, Twitter, somebody else was being let go. And I liked Peter Lombardi. So I thought he did a really good, really good job. He did have a few moments where I'm like, eh, quit talking to us like we're stupid. But for the most part, I really liked I liked I liked him. But see, and, that's the thing. It's like even in the in the NHL in the video game series, like they get James Sabalski doing play by play. He doesn't do play by play anywhere that I've ever heard. But I think the idea behind that, and it just as much as it drives me crazy as a hardcore fan. It's to try and make the game more palpable for those who don't watch it as much or who aren't as invested and try to bring them into it. But yeah. for veterans of the game and hardcore guys like us, it's like, oh, like get me somebody experienced. Like I didn't love Jim Houston, but I I I liked the way that Jim Houston presented the game, I guess is how yep. I can say it. Yeah, no, I, I agree with I agree Doc with Doc Emmerich, you know, for as grinding as that voice could be, you know. What does Doc Emmerich say though that pisses me off all the time? Ring, uh, so no rings that are on the boards, or I don't know. Some he has a saying, I can't think of it now. Yeah, he I'm was sure. doing the video game series, he had oh. some years in there, like waffle boarded when they made like a blocker save. And it's like, what the? Oh. And it's like, oh, yeah, a blocker 80 million years ago looked like a waffle. Now I get it. Like, they called it that when I was a little kid. You shouldn't have to think about the game in those terms when you're watching the game, right? So, you know, but what's another thing that cracks me up, that cracks me up. Um. Like I call like hockey pants, hockey pants, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. And in, in, in a, in a pretty fairly big size of the Midwest, it's, they're called breezers. What? Yeah. Sorry. What? <laughs> they're, called, they're called breezers. Now they're called breezers. But Minnesota is the state of hockey. They're called breezers. They should know better. This is not acceptable. I, I've always thought it's stupid. It is stupid. You don't just think it's stupid. It's factually stupid. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Breezers. Yeah. Uh, you remember Cooper Alls? You're probably too young to remember Cooper Alls. Oh, I remember Cooper Alls. You have to know Cooper Alls. I'm from Canada. I know it doesn't matter how old I am. I know all the hockey. I wore them games. for like five years when I was a kid, man. You freaking fall down. You'd slide forever. Oh, yeah. It's, they oh. were comfy. Like the girdles <laughs> were comfy. You know, they, they were. They were a lot. More, they were more comfortable than breezers. I'd like to figure out across all of our episodes at which point on average we go completely off the rails because it's about the 44 and a half minute mark here tonight. We, yeah, we, we went off the rails. But it's some of our best work, so let's just leave it. <laughs> we could cut it out, but we won't, right? Nah, no, nah, that's inauthentic. People got to know the real us. We're idiots. We get back to hockey this weekend, Sunday night. We got in Va Vancouver comes to the Saddle Dome, and then uh, Monday Adam night. Adam and the Calgary Rebels. Flames. <laughs> What's that? I said Adam Klapka and the Calgary Flames. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <I see. laughs> 
Well, if uh, he's on the opening night roster, I'm going to look like a jack, total jack wagon now. Oh, like, you know what? I it, it, at least now it looks like it's in some universe possible. I don't think it's going to happen, but if, good if it him, does, I'm ordering a Klapka jersey. I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> I'll buy a oh, jersey. you know what? I got I got to talk about this. I'm going to. Uh, Sam Phelps, who's a so a much for the forty-five minute episode. <laughs> yeah, no, this is important because this really, really, really pissed me off. So Sam Phelps is a big uh, game worn oh, jersey. Oh, I saw it. I saw it. I know what you're going to say about the the nineteen jersey. Go for it. Yeah, I want tell the story. So this somebody. So Sam got his hands on this. Sam's a great guy, great collector. Like I've never even met the guy. I consider him a buddy. Anyway. He gets a 19 Kachuk jersey and turns out the jersey is game worn, but not by Kachuk. It was worn by David Jones in the series against the Canucks. You know, he was wearing it when Stajan scored the series winning goal, right? So some idiot buys this jersey from the Flames, it would have been for the 14 15 season, strips the Jones name bar off of it, and has a Kachuk name bar put on, on a game worn jersey. If you want to buy replicas, authentic, you know, like go ahead. But you don't desecrate a game worn jersey by doing that. Uh, I couldn't believe it when I saw this. Oh, I, like the I, collective I, groan and size, and and you you could you could almost like you could sense the tears from some people that commented like in that community. It's just like sacrilege. Like, what are you doing? That that to me, like you always see those jersey fouls. Like somebody has like a, a Leafs Gretzky jersey. You know, some delusional fan who's just drunk himself into oblivion. <laughs> this is the ultimate jersey foul. You just don't do that. Like, ugh. I got and that, and that Jones name bar wound up in the trash, and poor Sam had to go get one made. So now that jersey's ninety five percent authentic, right? <laughs> and then, yeah, it's it's yeah. I can't believe somebody would do that. Ugh. And to think though that they were gonna like, were they trying to like do it to get away, get more money or something? Like, was it a scam type? I don't think so. I think they, I, I don't know. But that's the other thing. Like, if you're going to do that, why would you spend the money on a game worn jersey and doctor it? Just that's buy a replica. Like, oh, God. Uh, the whole what thing the doesn't make any sense at all, does it? Not a goddamn bit. Anyway, shameful, shameful behavior. We will not tolerate that here on Flames Unfiltered ever. Oh, I won't. <laughs> we, we will talk <laughs> about game jerseys a lot, though. Like, and, I, and I like talking about game worn jerseys. Yeah, I picked up another one. I eh? think you, you see that. I got my my fourth Trevor Lewis. I got a second. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I have. Jeez, which one is it? That's that's so bad. Eh? I've got so many now. I don't even know which ones I have. So the one that I just picked up, I got the little binder here with all the jerseys in it. So we're up to four. Trevor Lewis. So. Oh, it's his first away jersey that he wore as a flame. Set one from twenty one twenty two. Hmm. Huh. So anyway, I'm always posting, looking for more. I just decided, you know, it's like Pokemon. Maybe I'll try and catch them all, right? <laughs> it's a great hobby. It is a great hobby. Flames hockey starts Sunday night. Canucks come to town. Monday night, Split Squad. Half at the Saddle Dome, half up in Seattle. And next Wednesday, we had to Winnipeg. And you will be back reporting next Wednesday for a Thursday drop. As next week on the show, I want to talk about player projections. Where do we Ooh. think... These players are great. fun. I, I, I look forward to this episode. Oh, me too. Next week. And along with, you know, talking about what's been going on at, at camp this year and, and the first week of what, how it went. You know, what what guys are, are playing well, which guys aren't, and uh, we'll see how it goes. But, so uh, we're actually we're actually going to take some projections from some of the major media outlets and do like an agree, disagree, or a higher level. Yes. Because some of these yeah. projections great some of them are horrendous i'm sure we have some of them. i know i do i have mine too and we're gonna break it all down we're gonna go through them all have a little bit of fun with it and that's next week on the show enjoy this week's hockey action flames fans kyle and i'll be back next week thanks for listening to flames unfiltered with brad burud and kyle lewis your source for unfiltered Calgary Flames hockey talk. Keep it locked on flamesunfiltered.ca. Subscribe where you get all your podcasts to never miss an episode. Flames hockey talk every week presented by Inside Edge Hockey Media Group.